Hi, everybody. Uh, this is the presentation for the Waynesville Merchants Association. I'm going to get going. My name is Maria Bearcat. Um, I know that most of you don't know me. I'm a social media trainer and a consultant, and I focus on that little image at the top, which is called the buyer's journey, how customers find activities, events, products, services, and it is a set process in a digital market. So what I do is I work to teach uh, businesses how to incorporate that. And my background is that I did work for many years in the tourism industry, unifying small towns in New England. And uh, this is probably the most important part of what Waynesville is interested in. So I'm just going to jump right in. I just want to show you kind of the difference of some of the things here. So the website, which is a beautiful website, but it doesn't give the information in a way that people really need to take a look at it. If you look at the top, you have your itineraries, your getaways, your family fun, and your where to shop sections. But Here's an example of how you unify it, where colors and fonts and imagery really come into play, where people can look at it and say, oh, I like this, it's uniform. Having too much text right up front isn't very positive. So I sent some corrections and things to Laura, and I know that she spread them around, and there's just some minor tweaks and things that can be done in the website to attract more visitors. Um, itineraries are probably your most critical missing element that is needed on the Waynesville Merchant Shop to draw visitors in and keep them there. And again, so itineraries and self-guided tours, these are very easy fixes. What's not so easy is the stuff that goes behind it. So here on the left is an example of uh, some itineraries that I did here locally. I live in Southern California now. And I worked with a town called Costa Mesa. They have very little tourism activities there. They do have arts and they do have some minor entertainment. Um, they do have shopping. It's all spread out very far. And it's one of the first towns that had the outdoor strip mall types of areas. So what we did is we put together a series of itineraries that were different, unique, the storylines, the, the links. And these are things that are missing here. So this is all a, a very nice story, but the pic pictures aren't that compelling and it's not telling me where to go. It's, it is talking about a few things, but you need to lead people through a process. So there needs to be multiple inventory uh, itineraries where people can go in and take a look and say, oh, I got my kids today. I'm going to bring my girlfriends here and go back and forth. So this is, again, it's something very easy to do. It's just a matter of putting it together and offering multiple versions so that people can download them, click them, view them. And then the call to action is, hey, once you come here, leave us a review. And this is very, very important. And I will talk about that. So four reasons. There's many reasons that small businesses and small business communities don't thrive in a digital economy. It's, it's tough. Things have changed quite a bit. The first thing is there's no community effort. And even when I work with an individual business, I always tell them, who's, who's the shop? on the right of you, on the left of you, across the street from you. It's very important that you work as a community because in a digital economy, we are sort of disengaged with the one-on-one -on -one people experience. And so people want that. So when they come into a town, especially a small town, they want it to feel connected. And many small towns are not connected at all. They're, they're struggling on their own. So there's a sense that, you know, it's sort of every man for himself. But those experiences are what will bring people in and keep them staying. The second thing is there's no social media strategy. That's very obvious. I'm a social media strategist. You, you need to have social media. But that's not a strategy in itself. A strategy is something where you're thinking it through months in advance and you're utilizing national types of events like hashtag days and, and different holidays that maybe not you're doing a sale. So 4th of July is not something that everybody does a sale for, but it could be something that you talk about and that you're giving people 
engaging and interesting information about the town, maybe some history or something like that. This is what a social media strategy is. It's having a clear content calendar that the merchants can use and that the individual businesses can feed off of and contribute to. And that's part of what I can do to help you. Your marketing and branding is boring. The site's beautiful. The town's amazing, but it's just sort of a mishmash of things, and there's nothing downloadable. There's very little relevant information that people want to know. I want to know who's behind this and who, who has it. I want to see multiple pictures. I want to see content that comes from visitors, and you know, you can't start off that way, but you can certainly start adding that, and you need to make room for it so that your branding is all a part of that. And then there's some mixture with the logos and stuff um, that we can talk about. Finally, you don't have a plan. You don't have a town plan that's bringing you all together, that's talking about the things that really need to go there. And viewing your competition is really, really important. It's understanding what each town surrounding you offers and how you can compete with that and include that sometimes. So just saying don't go here and come here is not a strategy, but understanding what is around you and why it's working or not working is really, really critical. And that's all part of the training process that I do. I can't just do stuff for you. I have to actually train you because the culture needs to change. That's where the community teamwork part comes in. So here's an image of, it's sort of the surrounding image of what's called a journey of a buyer. Like how do they find you, right? So I'm looking for something to do and we don't find websites. We find information that leads us to websites, right? So if I go in and I say, I'm staying in Cincinnati and what can I do on the weekends? What are close by me? And I Google that, you're going to be very surprised how little leads to Waynesville, Ohio. And what is there is very outdated. So this is the main focus of what we need to do together. We need to fix the awareness and the research portion. So this is where people go online and they put together ideas and they say, this is what I want to do, or I need to get a unique gift, or I want to get some antiques. Being a town that has so many antiques, you actually have very little information on the internet about you being a hub of, of antiques. There's no real expertise showing. And I'm sure because I've been into all of the shops on Main Street, you have a lot of expertise in antiques. You're just not putting it out. So this would be our main focus. The purchase part is what do we do when we get there, and it's really actually them showing up and doing it, and I can't control that. I can't control your hours or whether your salespeople are nice or not nice or whether they're responsive. This is all something that you would have to do individually, but it does feed into the experience of what people are getting. My own experience when I was there was mixed. One day I had a great day and the second day I didn't. I had people that didn't talk to me. I, did, I had shop owners who just sat behind counters. Um, there were some issues that I had. This is stuff that you need. You need to have a positive influence because you want people to leave your reviews. If they leave your reviews, you don't have to work so hard to get people aware of you because we look in that research process, we're looking for reviews and what you have is, is very few. And all of you should be on the appropriate sites as individual businesses and as a town because that would really bolster what you have. Why? 81% research before they shop. We live with our cell phones, right? This is the thing that we're using all of the time to tell us uh, what to do and where to go and how to operate. And you're lacking. 57% of the decision is made before they even engage. So in, in a town's case, the engagement is the showing up. It's the being there. It's visiting. And it's also part of your website. So I don't know the analytics because I don't have access to it, but I can tell just from the content and what is there that you probably don't have a whole lot of visitors that are coming to the site and that are staying on there very long because that's another indicator. So you can have 100 people that visit the site, but if they're not staying, if they're leaving quickly within a certain, you know, under a minute, your, your site isn't giving them what it is that they need. And these are things that you need to look at. 
86% of customers will pay up to 25% more for a better customer experience. And this is true across the board. The generation of buyers that we have, it wasn't, it's not just millennials anymore. It goes all the way up. We want value for our dollar. And a value to us is the experience that we're going to receive. So if I come into Waynesville and I bring my children, what am I going to learn? What am I going to get? So I'm willing to rent a car and come in if I'm a visitor or I'm willing to spend that day because paying more sometimes is time. So can it, should I just stay in town and do this or should I drive an hour and go there and do that? And this is what people think about today because they're doing it all online. Focus less on pretty. Pretty is not what makes it. You have a very pretty Main Street, but we want to know how valuable it is. Togetherness is a value. Uniqueness is a value. History is a value. Um, local fare, local scenery, the air, these are values. So you need family activities and events. All of you do. Friends, activities, events, couples. We want to see more inclusiveness to the whole town that brings that value there. And then the prettiness and the value come together to bring a lot more visitors into the town. 93% of consumers make their decision based off social media. Social media is not just Facebook. It's also Yelp. It's TripAdvisor. Um, TripAdvisor and Yelp, you know, started for one reason, and now people review many things on there. There's services and products and all sorts of stuff. And you need to have a unified message as a community to show consistency. You need to be posting and blogging and doing this stuff on a regular schedule. It needs to be current information. It doesn't need to be long. It doesn't need to be Hollywood writing. It just needs to be authentic, and it needs to be easy to find. 40% is the average customer satisfaction level once they come into the process. So what does that mean? That means I'm so excited to go and then I get there and I met with shops that aren't open or salespeople that, that aren't even paying attention to me. And there's many reasons for that. There is a sort of malaise that comes over um, in a community when things are tough and there's a lot of stuff going on. Having a unified message with signage, making people excited, having everyone in the town sort of work together. I'm not saying you all need to have the same hours, but you do need to recommend each other and you need to talk about each other and say, hey, you, you want a cup of coffee? Go down the street. If you're, you want a, a snack, go here. If, you, if you're looking for a really unique gift, go here. This type of interaction is what raises customer satisfaction because it's unified. And I think most of you have been in business a long time or, or you're familiar with how business is. And this is how it used to be, right? We used to have our decisions made from the yellow pages. We said, well, what are we going to do this weekend? Let's decide to go here or let's buy here. Or, uh, this is the kind of products I'm doing. And if you wanted to reach out to people in Cincinnati, you would have run an ad there as well as in your local community. We don't do things that way anymore. Everything we do is based in the search, in the research of the internet right? We're looking at Google. And Google only works to find your business if I know your name, if I know who you are. This was divided by category. So I said, unique gifts, unique gifts. I needed a dentist, a dentist, and it would bring me all sorts of things. Google doesn't really work that way. It needs the content that you're all providing to bring people to the forefront. It's sort of like a big river. And when the information is stagnant and old, it overlooks that and it goes to where it can get new and relevant information. And you're, and you're not there. The website is very important. Google needs to use it. It's search engine optimization. It's something that needs to change all the time. You can't just set it and forget it. The information has to be very relevant, very current, alongside of all that other social media. So that's where you really need to start is on there. It's a beautiful site. It's When you first open it up, that's exactly what the town looks like when I look at that picture, I think, yeah, I've been there. It's, it's really quaint and it's really wonderful. And I'm living in an urban area and I want to go and I want to go out there. But everything else 
is not leading me to the excitement part of what happens. First thing you have to do is every business needs to be listed. It needs to have a bio. There needs to be some coordination. I need to click and link. I don't want to have to go Google something that's mentioned on that site. And I want to know how to find it. And I really want to have everything on one page. Itineraries, research, and creation. This is something that, that I'm very good at doing. I can look at a place and I can tell you what people are really looking for and put that together. Something that can give you a foundation and then those of you that are historians or know the unique shopping and local things that are going on, then you can just continually update that base foundation. The shops need a map. We need to know where to go and what to do. We don't want to just stand there and imagine. And sometimes people don't have a lot of time when they come in. You know, a child is cranky or, you know, somebody called them. So having that map is a very simple thing to do. And everybody needs to be on it, whether they pay to be on it or not. It's just how it looks differently. Then your store events. You need to have them. You don't have enough of them. You're not promoting them. You're not even promoting your town events, let alone store events. And uh, I'm sure Laura will tell you, I work with Laura, that I'm always telling her, you need, to have, you need to have stuff going on all the time to get people interested. And then the blog and the posting schedule. This is very critical. It's something, if enough people are a part of that process and enough of you are on this merchant site, that you can throw things in. It doesn't need to be a five-page article. It can be just a picture of a product and an explanation of that product. It showcases your expertise. Google likes stuff like that. So here we have itineraries. So the, these are excellent pieces and you have a very good start on them. I do not think that your images are compelling. They're not compelling enough for people to take a look at it. You may or may not have local photos, but you can use stock photos to start. It's, it's really just the expressions and the feel that people have, right? So we want to be able to click it and we want to be able to download it. So as I look at this, I think, well, this isn't very engaging to me. It's not very relevant. And you have to be very careful with photos because young people look at old people. They don't want to do old things and old people don't want to do young things. And I know there's all this kind of problems, but shopping bags and products are a much better display. Family fun is something that you really need to show the family. So this is a very deceiving picture because it's telling me that you have a carousel in town when in fact this was probably there for some kind of an activity and it's not normal. So if I show up and I don't have that carousel because my kid loves a carousel, I'm going to be very disappointed. So how you use the images and what you say, what the stories are, are very critical to making this page much more engaging. So again, I'm going to go back to this itinerary and just point out a few things that are really important. First of all, the pictures are important because I want to see what it's going to look like. I, it doesn't have to be a phenomenal photo. The only thing that really needs to be very phenomenal is I need pictures of the food. So your restaurant tours, your coffee shops, your donuts, your candy, whatever, we want to see what we're going to get. We don't want to see it being prepared and we don't want to see raw ingredients. We want to see the tacos. We want to see the candy bars. We want to actually physically see it and we want to have links and we want to download it and have a little story in there and make it compelling enough that people can take a look at it. So this combined with, as they turn over that itinerary, there's a listing of all the businesses that, that can help them for that day. Antiquing. So uh, I know that your town is an antique hub, but believe me, you cannot find that anywhere. When you were having your second Saturday event and I was helping um, Laura, to put together some things, I was really surprised at how little information and expertise came out of Waynesville. That if I typed it in, a lot of pictures and a lot of information came up, but none of it was about Waynesville. So you're not providing people with enough information to download, to understand. And it's very simple to overcome. It's just a matter of taking pictures and talking about products and making yourself that expert in the experience. Here's an example of something that I found where they 
you know, head of product. I have a friend that loves this kind of stuff. They're just talking about it. They're giving a description of what it is. And then they could have a little bit of story about it, you know, things that you could do with it or, uh, you know, what's your expertise? So if you're selling antiques, are you just selling it to make money or are you selling it to help me to do something? And that's where the authenticity part comes in. I don't just want to come into town and buy stuff. I want to come into town and learn stuff. I want to, I want to experience the flavor of the town and learn what people have. So that's really critical. Getting outside is very, very important. It, it's just critical. So the little boy on the carousel versus the little girl in the swing, it, which one is going to be more realistic? So People want to get out of the city and they want to come in and they want to feel the outdoors. So the things that you might not be thinking about, maybe you're, you're saying, well, we don't have a walking trail or we don't have something like that, but you probably have a school that has a playground. And when you're putting together an itinerary for a family, you need to include that because sometimes kids get you know, oversensitized and out of control and parents just want them to burn off some energy. Where can they do that in your town? Where are the parks? Where are the trails? And it doesn't matter that it's near or far or part of the Merchant Association. It's a service to the people that are coming in. About Waynesville, this is important. Um, again, with the map, the locators, we've seen them in other towns. They're not difficult. You don't have to print a thousand of them. You can just have them in a PDF that people can download on their own, or you as a shop owner can go to Staples and print a hundred for yourself in coordinating what's there so that I have something that physical in my hand that makes it fun, makes it fun for adults. Maybe you can turn it over and have a kid's version, and it gives people an idea that you are a unified town. So here's just some examples of different maps and very easy to create. It doesn't require an art degree to just draw some squares and put in some red lines and turn it over. And then on the back are listed all the restaurants on one, all the shops, all the antiques, all of this, all the services. And, uh, you know, make it very simple. If you look at this one from Las Vegas, it's fantastic because it has a 3D mode to it. You know, Las Vegas isn't a very big place. It's just one long street that has a lots of big, huge buildings. But if you made those buildings more normal size, it wouldn't be any bigger than Waynesville. It would just be a small place. So you, you need to give people a compelling reason to walk, to see, to come and visit. And all this stuff is very easily done. Now the history. History is an incredible way to attract families, number one, but also people. We're all interested. We all know that Ohio is full of history. But when I go in and when I see it, I'm not I'm not really following it. And when I when I check out the information of what's fun for me to do once I get outside of Cincinnati or Dayton, I'm not really seeing stuff like that. So this map is a great start for your history. I think I would make it a little bit more compelling. I'd have little call outs with cool pictures. People want to see, you know, just different things. They want to, it makes them excited. It makes them want to come and see. Having maps for kids, treasure maps, where they can discover the different things in the town. These are all ways to get parents. Parents are the shoppers and that's how you're going to grow. I found this article after it didn't come up right away, on the tunnels. Um, tunnels may have helped slaves. Group researches passages ne beneath the village. So it's an, it's an old article. Uh, and the picture that you have on this, this is not a compelling image. This may be what it actually looks like, but it doesn't tell me anything. So if I have to think about driving out 45 minutes to an hour just to go see, and I'm, I'm looking at it like, well, what is that? Is looks like, ooh, it's probably wet and cold and damp. I want to see the history. I want to see pictures of things. You know, go into the museum and pull out some of that activity and make it compelling enough that people can come and see. I, I get it that this is what it looks like, but what did it look like? Who were the people that were a part of it? Is there a map that shows me how to even get there? So I come on Main Street, how do I get to this location? So hopefully you're beginning to see how we want to thread all these things together. Shopping, shopping in a small town is a competitor to Amazon for one main reason. It's unique. You have unique products. Yes, they're probably products that I could find online. But here it's all in one street. And 
people today, especially young people, want unique products. There are tons and tons of websites that are pulling together very unique products. You're not promoting that enough. You're not giving people enough of a reason to come and shop here. Um, it's, it, it does have a feel of every man for itself because not everything is listed and there's not a unification that's there. So American Home Crafter, American Home Comforts, um, this may be in fact what you look like on the outside, but I want to know what you have on the inside. So what am I coming to look at the green building? No. Where is the outside and the inside process of shopping? Eating, everybody needs to eat. So every restaurant, every coffee shop, every pizza parlor, they all need to be listed all of them, whether they're members or not members. Because if I drive out an hour, I need to know that A, I can get my coffee, B, I can feed my kids, and C, I can grab something and drive home. And if I can't, I'm not going to come. It's just not going to happen. People need this information and it needs to have compelling images. Looking at the outside of a pizza parlor doesn't mean anything. Seeing the pizza, seeing the coffee, these are very simple things that we want when we take a look. Where to stay? Again, I worked in the tourism industry. I know all about heads and beds. And when you're in a small town and you don't have that, or if you're competing with, you know, say a holiday in, um, you know, off the interstate or something like that, there's nothing wrong with including them in on your process. Because if somebody stops in that interstate, they should be able to direct people to your town and say, you know, I know you have a couple hours to kill. Why don't you drive into Waynesville? It's only, you know, two miles up the road and here's a map of the town. So where you stay is very critical to how you get people to come and visit. Things to do, the weddings, the activities, the locations, all that kind of stuff with the events. Um, this is not a very compelling picture for Christmas in the village. Uh, it doesn't even say to me Christmas in the village. It says Halloween, really, that two people are standing there in a costume. And I don't see people. I don't see lights. It's Christmas imagery is evening time. We want to see the Christmas trees. We want to see what the shops look like. We want to know that it is worthwhile to come out and visit this town. Your events. Your events need a huge bolster. They're not listed on any of the event sites. There's so many that you can list for free. There's so many different ways that you can offer that. Um, again, compelling images. I can't even tell what this is. I had to really blow it up. I knew that it, that it probably was a flower, but it doesn't mean anything to me. Having an image of a mother is far better than having an image that's not understandable, that's not really in there to do. Um, I sent to Laura something about this ad. This is a, a really poor ad to represent a second Saturday street fair. When you look at your competitors and you have many of them, they have much more compelling imagery. And that's why people are going there and not to you. Families are your greatest superpower. They're all different kinds of families today. The world is changing, but one thing doesn't change. Parents want to teach their children something. So they want to come in with their children. And this new young generation, these millennials, they want to do things with their children. They want their children to participate in events and activities. Having activity books for kids is probably the best thing you can do and the easiest thing to do. It shows them there's a treasure map. Go to this shop and this shop and do this and go to the museum and go to the library and do all of these things. And it leads the children around. And it gives the parents an opportunity to experience the town. Maybe they don't buy this time, but they will come back or they will call you and say, hey, I was in town and I saw that you had this product. Do you still have it? Can you send it to me? Ongoing arts programs for families is the number one way. You want to know how museums survived, survived all of the internet drama, the crash of the economy, the lack of uh, deductibility in donations is they do family events every single weekend. They are opening up their doors to people and saying, come here, we will entertain all of you, family and children, and we will just draw pictures or do treasure maps or whatever. It's such a simple thing to do. It 
does take your time and it takes your creative energy. And the more excited you are about having people in your town, the more excited they're going to be about coming. So here's just some examples. Just very, you can see the qual the difference, you know. So this is obviously more dramatic and, you know, we had a more complete version. This is a very simple version. But these activity di guides are downloaded over and over again. And if I look for activities to do in certain cities, these come up first. So I'm not even looking for a museum, but I'm looking for something to do with my kids. So downloadable materials like this pay off big when it comes to Google. And I'm sure a lot of you are creative enough to do these on your own. I can help you and I can get you started on them. They're not difficult to do and they're actually quite fun. Here's just some more guides. Again, you know, fancier, very simple. You know, these are just clip art pictures. There's some pictures from some restaurants. Maybe, uh, maybe you have a garden center that you can send kids to to check off on their little list of things. There's the history. All of this kind of stuff is, is really relevant information in the data world. A blog. This is scary. People don't like to do it. They feel that they can't write and they can't do stuff. A blog is something that helps you. It helps Google to find you and to share your information. You need to coordinate it with your other social media. And every store needs to do posting. And you can just highlight a product and talk about something that's in the store right at that moment. It doesn't have to be an event. It doesn't have to be something specific. It needs to be something that has digital keywords in it to attract people to you and to what's not there. So I already had sent this out, but your categories kind of need to be revamped a little bit so that it's easier for people to navigate. We, we don't know what these things are, like the Hamel House. Why is the Hamel House a category? That doesn't make sense to someone who's never been to your town. There's history, there's shopping, there are um, maybe collectibles and restaurants, but there's not names of things. So these are just little things that you can do. This page is a huge can of worms because you on one page, so you have three of the same company highlighted. Maybe you're paying for this. I don't know the specifics. But when you have this and it's not represented well, it turns people off. You're better off having a trivia page than you are having a deals page. Your deals should be on your website. And that's just the bottom line. You shouldn't have deals and sales on a community site. It should be something that's focused on the community, the products, and your expertise. Lily's Corner should be talking about the phenomenal selection that they has alongside of the other businesses on this page so that everyone's equally represented. But I do, again, I don't know the specifics. I'm just telling you how people think when they look at this and they see the lack of information. Classes and seminars, grow this page. Grow it. Put trivia on here. All of you should have events. All of you should be teaching people the expertise. You should be teaching them framing. You should be teaching them about antiques. You should be doing these things. Whether people show up or not, we want to see this. You're there anyway, right? So why does it matter? that 20 people show up. Now, of course, if there's materials involved and a price, but there's a way to promote that too, to help you. Your contact us page should have that downloadable map. It should be included. You should not have individual emails on here. It's really not a suggested idea. You should use your main email. You can list the names of people that run these associations, but I wouldn't recommend that you do that for many reasons, which we can talk about later, but it's just better uh, for you to have this page more unified and visual. There should be some pictures on here. Having a downloadable membership directory, and when I say membership, I mean members are bolded and non-members are not, and they're smaller. This is how we unified most of the North Shore of Boston, was we included everyone, whether they wanted to be on there or not. It's important. I want to know everything that's in that town. And whether or not you decided to pay to be part of an association shouldn't be a reason that you're not on a list. I'm not saying pictures. I'm just saying that I want to know all the places I can get coffee because sometimes I need it right now. So that's important. 
how far Waynesville is from everywhere. This can be a very fun map. You should talk about getting around, even though it's a small town. You should make it fun. You should talk about if you're coming from bike, if you're doing a bus, if you're doing a train, if you, you know, make it a fun thing and it gets people excited. Maybe there's somebody in town who rents bicycles. I don't know how or where. I know that I rented a car and I drove in and it would have been nice to know how many miles it was from where I was coming from. And people like that. And they also like to see Paris and Los Angeles on there because it says, wow, do people come there from Paris? That's cool. Maybe we should go there. So it's kind of a confirmation and fun thing to do. Reviews are the, the ultimate goal. This is your treasure. If you don't have people leaving you reviews and posting photos and using your hashtag, you're failing. Because this is how an entire generation decides what to do and where to go. You need to be focused on this. This is how you make Christmas your best holiday of the year, is by having the proper reviews, by getting people, by talking about the information. Here is Waynesville, Ohio as a hashtag. I went to Instagram and oof, it's bad. It's very bad because it's not a true representation of the very quaint town that I personally went to. I don't see antiques on here. I don't see shops. I don't see food. I don't see people. I just see a few of your people. And as you go down through, you're going to see how old some of them are. You should be all of you should be encouraging people to post and you yourself should be posting um, once a day just to pull that up. If all of you did just that, you'd have a much greater presence. So visual matters, what it is that matters. Now, what you write behind it, I can give you ideas about that. TripAdvisor is critical. Um, TripAdvisor and Yelp, which is where most people go, um, it's lame. It's, it's really bad. Things to do. The things to do are very far away from Waynesville because the places very far away are plugged in. You're not plugged in. So we need to get you plugged in. So here's Little Miami Scenic Trail in Springfield, right? So uh, we're not even talking about Waynesville. So you don't have anything. There's nothing for me to do in Waynesville other than drive to another city. That's a problem. Yelp is the same thing. All of you should have a Yelp account. All of you should be paying attention to it because number one, we look for the review, but number two, we look for the business owner's response. We want to know that you're paying attention and many of the sites that are on here are not even claimed by the actual business owner. Anyone can create a Yelp page for you. This is very critical for everyone. The feedback is, the, is your total and complete priority. If you don't have people sharing their experiences for you, about you, you're not going to get visitors. It's just not going to happen. It's why your events are falling, because we don't know what other people think. And that's how we make decisions today. We go into the search. We want to see what's there. And having a one-star review is not necessarily the kiss of death. The response to the one-star review is the kiss of death. Because if there isn't one, it tells me that that business owner is outdated. They're old. They don't know how to go in there. Or it's really true because they're not responding. Christmas is should be your focus. I'm going to go through this really fast. You have ways. All of you should be on the same schedule. You should all be promoting a certain number of weeks in advance. It's a content calendar that you can create, videos that you can do on your phone, talking about the town, having people come out and film it, and, and having a unified calendar for the merchants on Google so that you know what's there, building that email list and sending them something. You, if I'm going to sign up for something, I want to receive something, right? This is what a Google Calendar looks like. These are national days. They're hashtag days. They're very important. World Elephant Day may mean nothing to you, but if you have a product, an antique that's an elephant, and that happens to be the post, it could get shared multiple times because you don't know what people's interests are. You don't know. These are national things that expose you to a national audience, a national audience that can filter through somewhere near your town. So it's very important that every month you're focused on this stuff, right? That you're looking to see what's there. 
and you're timing it and you're putting your event big and large and you're, you're promoting that event big and large and you're using these national events. So these are just kind of some of the things that, that are very easy to set up. They're all free. It, I mean, it doesn't require a lot of work. It doesn't require a lot of maintenance honestly. But if everybody has access to it, then you all know what's going on and you can all be doing this in your individual businesses. Christmas in the Village. Um, this is a sad case for Christmas in the Village. First of all, it's from 2015. It's the most current thing I could find. And it is probably one of the reasons that a town like Waynesville should be exploding is that I want to get out of my urban nightmare or my suburban nightmare and I want to go to a little village and I want to do shopping and I want to hear carolers and I want to, you know, eat roasted almonds and have a great time with my family. And I don't see any of that anywhere to a place where people would become aware of it. There are no pictures posted by people. There's no activity. And just because you your attendance has fallen doesn't mean that you can't bolster it up and get people in there this year, take pictures so that next year is three times that amount so that you'd have a whole year to promote this in your pictures. And that's a really critical thing to look at. And that's really where we are today and why we need to act urgently because Christmas isn't that far. We're already planning Christmas in our minds once the summer comes. So I want to thank everybody. We're going to open it up to questions. I'm not going to record anything for that. Uh, I will be sending out a proposal and you are welcome, all of you, to email me or uh, through Laura, you can, you know, um, find uh, my contact information.